Hi, thanks for joining us. We just wanted to cover a few things that we talked about on Sunday as a bit of a recap to our sermon that uh, series that we've been going through. The series that we're in has to do with Advent and the idea that with Advent, it's about watching and waiting. And Christ's birth was no different. It was about watching and waiting. And the prophecy of him coming and then the fulfillment of Jesus' birth in Matthew chapter 1. But just for a few minutes, I'd like to talk to you about some of that because it really struck me and um, it gave me a bit of a perspective that I hadn't had before. And so I wanted to just talk through that. Uh, We see in Isaiah chapter 7, and everybody knows you hear about this verse all the time. um, And it says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will bear a child and he will be a son and she will call his name Emmanuel. That's a very familiar verse. But as we read it, I think to myself, what does that have to do with watching and waiting? And I thought, it was kind of, it's kind of like a little kid that's waiting to ask a parent a question and they just can't wait. You know, they're tapping mommy and daddy on the shoulder and and waiting to get their turn in. Or it's even like Christmas morning. You know how it is. The kids get up and they're all excited and everything's going on and mom and dad are still in bed. The coffee's not on. Breakfast is not made. And mom and dad want to eat and drink some coffee. And all the little kids want to do is open the gifts. And there's so much anticipation. There's so much waiting and they're watching and they're, what's the next move? And so they're so excited. And so many times in life, we have to watch and wait. Um, I was retelling a story that happened to me uh, last week. Um, I was driving and I was sitting at a red light and I was supposed to be at a meeting that I was late for. I don't like being late. And so I'm sitting at this red light. I was like three cars back. I had one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake. I'm watching the other light to see if it's going to change, watching my light for it to change because I was about ready to race off so I could get there in time, waiting. I'm watching the lights to see what's going on and when can I go. So the light finally changes and we sit there. And I was like, All right, you have to be kidding me. Like, I have some place to be like, I'm, I'm, I'm expected, you know, I wanted to get to be able to do what I had to do and get to the meeting on time. And so we sat there for a moment and the thought that ran through my mind immediately was, is the guy in front of me waiting for a different color of light? Um, Is he waiting for an invitation to be delivered to his car so he could go through the light, you know, all these thoughts. Um, And so I started to get a little bit anxious and crazy, you know, like I got to get there. But, you know, in life, many times we have to watch and wait. And I find this story in Isaiah chapter 7 and Matthew chapter 1 to be very similar. When I read this story, I think to myself, yeah, but what's the story behind the story? Like, what's the backstory behind Isaiah chapter 7? Yes, it was it was a foretelling of Uh, Jesus being born from the prophet Isaiah, but what was going on? And so I did some reading and I, and I looked uh, at the chapters before it and I, and I saw that there was this king in Israel. His name was Ahaz. Ahaz was actually the grandson of Uzziah, the king uh, that before him, Ahaz was actually 20 years old and he was not a good king at all. Uh, in Israel. He was bad. Matter of fact, he did things that God did not want him to do. He did the exact opposite many times that God wanted him to do. And so Israel was being attacked and he was very, very concerned and fearful that Israel, Judah, where he was the king, was going to be destroyed and captured. And so he was doing all these things, trying to make alliances, and he was scared and he didn't know what to do. And then comes Isaiah on the scene. And I Isaiah, a prophet of God, was listening to God, and God said that Isaiah should tell Ahaz uh, a certain thing about um, what he was going to do. And so in Isaiah chapter 14, we see that um, Ahaz was told to ask God for a sign. And Ahaz said, no, I'm not asking God for a sign because I'm not sure he's going to hear me. I don't want to test his patience, but... I just don't want to do that. And so Isaiah told him again, hey, why don't you ask God for a sign? 
and he refused to give God a sign. And so Isaiah said to him, hey, God told me to tell you something. And he said this, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. I read that and I think, wow, that, that's a great, great prophecy. And that's a great, encouraging word. But what did Ahaz think? Like, did that help him? Was he still scared? I, I pretty much think he was. And he was probably wondering, okay, what's the big deal with this? That's still not going to help me. But if you read back a little bit further, some verses earlier, Isaiah is told to tell Ahab a certain thing about being destroyed. Here's what we know. We know that Jesus was uh, from the line of Judah. Actually, he's called the, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Therefore, we also know that God has a certain idea about protection of Israel and Judah so that his son could come through that line. We know now that there was no way that God was going to allow Judah to be destroyed. There was no way uh, because of his purpose and plan he had to deliver Jesus to us. But I was wondering, you know, like what what was going on at the time with Ahaz? Like how, how did he respond to that? And so let me read this verse for you. He was afraid. He was scared. The circumstances looked bad. He wasn't sure that God was going to save him. And Isaiah the prophet was told to say this to Ahaz. Listen to these words. Isaiah, say to Ahaz, take care, be calm, have no fear, and don't be faint-hearted. And I thought, wow, you're about ready to get captured. You're not sure if you're going to live. And God gives you these words and you're wondering, you're watching, you're waiting to see if you're going to be destroyed. And then he gives you this promise, but then he tells you to do certain things while you're waiting. And he tells him, be calm, don't have any fear, take care of yourself and don't be faint hearted. And I thought to myself, wow, how many times have I failed to do that when I'm watching and waiting for something and expecting something? I'm asking for God to do something and... He does nothing, it seems. It seems like he doesn't even hear me. Well, I know that's not true, but because I'm human, sometimes we struggle. We get scared. Uh, we get fearful. Um, our insides are all rumbling and turning, and we're not sure what to do. And so we, we get very um, keyed up, and we get anxious, and we're waiting for God to deliver. And sometimes he doesn't deliver when we think he should, but he always does deliver at the best time. It's the same with this prophecy and the telling of Jesus during this time of the year. He was promised in Isaiah chapter 7, he would be born. And then in Matthew chapter 1, there's a record of Jesus being born in a manger to marry a virgin. The difference is between those two is 730 years. It took 730 years for God in his time, the best time, to deliver on his promise. When I think about that at this time of the year, I think, well, yeah, but why can't he do it quicker? And why can't he do it my way? Well, we all know that God's way is always best. We know that he does things in his timing for the best and that honors and glorifies him the most. But my encouragement to you is this today. As you're thinking about Christmas, as you're thinking about the circumstances that you're in, as you're wondering about this relationship or that relationship or a job issue or money, and you're asking God to do something and you're just not sensing that he's answering and, and answering quick enough, I would encourage you to not grow weary, I would encourage you to don't fear, um, try to stay calm, try to stay focused on him, trust God in the idea that he's got the best plan for you. And it maybe just won't happen when uh, you think it should. So with that, I think to myself, man, that's a big lesson. And, you know, I, I'm excited about the fact that I get to see that Jesus was born. But in this passage, I learned more from 
what God said to an evil king. And it challenges my own heart in times of when I watch and wait for God to work, just like they were watching and waiting for Jesus. Can I trust God while I wait and while I watch and not get all worked up? I know that's hard and I know it's difficult, but here's what we know for sure from God's word. God always delivers on every promise that he makes. He's never late and he's never early and he does what he says he's going to do. Now, it's just for us to trust God while we're waiting and while we're watching. And I know that that's difficult and I know that that can, that can sometimes be discouraging but we know that God has his best in mind, his honor and his glory, and he loves you and cares for you and has your best in mind as well. We're glad that you stopped by today at Rives to check us out and see what's going on here. We're excited again that what what God is doing and how he's uh, raising up people and, and people are coming to know Jesus and coming to faith in Christ. And we're excited about that. If you're in the Rives area, you're more than welcome to join us on Sunday mornings at 1045 uh, during the Christmas season. We're going to have one service on Christmas Eve. It's going to start at six o'clock um, and you're more than welcome to join us then uh, Sunday, December 25th. We're not having any services and we've told our people we want you to spend this time with your family enjoying what God has given you. Again, we're excited that you stopped in to see us and hope to see you next week. Have a great day.